Namaste, J. Swaminarayan. Human life has such great potential. With advanced abilities in contemplation, dexterity, and adaptability, humans have outpaced the progress resulting from natural patterns of evolution. Combining these with more common characteristics like survival and a desire for pleasure or comfort has resulted in inventions and innovations that provide us with the lifestyle we have today. But humans are also unique because for as long as we can track, humans have sought discovery. With systems like the scientific method, humans have come so far. And although our knowledge and understanding of the physical universe continually grows at an exponential rate from a data standpoint, every breakthrough often sheds light on how little we actually know, and correspondingly, how much we may never know. Still, the human race does not give up the quest. Similarly, despite overwhelming challenges and distractions, humans have endeavored to discover broader, universal truths regarding the self, purpose, and the underlying nature of the physical universe we inhabit. Humans have learned mindfulness, meditation, and introspection, leading to deeper aspirations and perspectives. And by finding answers to the right types of questions, humans have attained states of enlightenment, perfect equanimity, and true fulfillment. These very special groups of humans have discovered that the ability to discern real amidst the unreal is ultimately the most useful ability and worthwhile endeavor for human life. This ability to discern real from what is unreal has been referred to more simply as Vivek. Vivek begins with aspiration, a supremely noble aspiration. During Vedic times, a famous lineage of wise kings ruled over a region called Vide, located in the eastern part of the South Asian peninsula. They were all named Janak. There are many stories highlighting their wisdom. One such King Janak was known to hold assemblies of scholars to discuss spiritual topics quite often. Although he had many worldly responsibilities to uphold as a ruler of people, his desire for spiritual wisdom never subsided. Once, at the end of a long day, during which he had eaten well, Janak fell asleep. In the middle of the night, he woke up suddenly to the sounds of horns and drums. His kingdom was under siege from a ruthless enemy. Janak quickly got himself battle ready and found himself at the head of his army, trying to defend itself against a vastly superior enemy. Janak was routed and forced to surrender his entire kingdom in order to protect the lives of his people. The new ruler exiled Janak. Janak left the comfort of servants, of palace, and the love of his family. Janak had nothing except for tattered rags covering his injured body. Still, hurting from the humiliation of defeat, the loss of everything he had known to be his, and now, a sensation that was completely new to him, ravaging hunger bordering on starvation. Janak found himself begging for food from anyone he came across. No one seemed to care who he was. He felt rejection for the first time. Janak chanced upon a place providing food to the poor. When his turn came, he saw that there were barely any scraps left. Still, he was grateful. But just as soon as he received precious food, it was knocked out of his hands and into a small hole forever lost. At that moment, the disappointment was so intense that Janak shot up in his bed. He looked around. The lavish wealth he was used to, his luxurious palace with guards and servants, his family, everything was the way it was before the war. War, poverty, hunger, rejection, so real just a few seconds ago, it had all been a dream. Or was it? Is this real or was that real? From that moment on, whomever he spoke to, whether it was his queen, family members, ministers, and especially the scholars in his courts, 
Janak would repeat one question. Is this real or was that real? Janak said. No one could answer him. And Janak refused to put the question aside. He recognized the profound nature of this experience. He had to have an answer to his question. He would not forget this and move on to life as usual. Eventually, a young boy named Ashtavakra, brilliant though physically deformed, offered to answer Janak's inquiry. Without any context or explanation, Janak respectfully asked, O oh, wise soul, is this real? Or was that real? Ashtavakra smiled at Janak and said, If this is real, then that was real. If that was real, then this is real. If this is false, then that was false. But you should know, Janak, if that was false, then this is false as well. Janak was impressed with the sagely answer, Ashtavakra needed no context. He knew exactly what Janak was asking. Janak knew he had found the right person to answer this question, and maybe many more in the future. Still, Janak didn't fully understand. He looked at this child, his guru now, as if asking for an explanation. Ashtavakra said, Janak, look around. You are surrounded by wealth, luxury, comfort, adulation, respect. Did any of these exist in your dreams? Janak answered, No, Guruji. Ashtavakra continued, In your dream, you experienced defeat, humiliation, hunger, loneliness, depression. Are any of those currently present? Janak answered, No, Guruji, they weren't. They aren't. Ashtavakra said, Janak, none of those objects or feelings, whether they be in your dream state or waken state, are real. One set vanishes when your eyes open, the other set vanishes when your eyes close. Janak was saddened to hear this. If it is all false, am I to believe that nothing is real? To this, Ashtavakra said, the experiences are false, but you experience them. In your dreams then, an awakened state now, you, you are the common, unchanging element, the conscious entity, the Atma, you are real, not this body of yours or even your mind. They were both in completely different condition, conditions. You on a level deeper than the physical and subtle bodies. This was a profound moment for Janak, helping him detach himself from the unreal. He was inspired to want to know the self, his true form and the divine entity even further within. This moment was a reward. Janak had earned. He had accepted the awkwardness that came from his inquiry. He did not allow himself to forget the bad dream simply because it was uncomfortable. He refused this false credo that ignorance is bliss. Janak aspired for truth. This moment gave him faith that he was on his way to finding it. May we all have such a noble aspiration in this precious life. To understand the true nature of the self, the world we inhabit, and the divine entity that pervades all. And so that we can remain more attentive to this aspiration, may we cultivate a perspective that is shielded from distractions. That will be the topic of our next video. Until then, Namaste, Jai Swaminath.